What's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you how you can grow mammoth red rock cabbage just like these guys. And we're going to do this from seed to harvest and at the end of this video I'm also going to show you a quick little recipe on how to use them. So stay tuned for the video. The first thing that you're going to need is pretty obvious and that is something to grow on. For today what I'm going to be using is a sprouting tray here in front of me but if you don't have that available you can either use a 1020 or you can also use some plates and stuff if that's what you have. And we'll add like a little card up here so you can click on where we actually grew microgreens using different objects around our house and it works perfectly for them. But today we're going to be using this tray. In the past, whenever I showed people how to grow on these, I actually only used this white tray here that's mesh and then the bottom green tray. But today, because it is a little bit easier, I'm going to be using another one of those green trays and that's gonna be acting as our weight and our blackout. So now let's go ahead and get into the next step, which is actually putting our grow medium into this tray here. For today's grow, I'm gonna be using coco coir. If you wanna use soil or some other grow medium, that is perfectly okay. Um, I haven't grown these on a hydroponic mat yet, so I don't know how they would grow on that. But if you have soil or coconut coir, I think you're gonna have a fantastic grow. Since this is a smaller tray, we only use three cups of our medium. So what I did here was I did two cups and then I did one cup. Now what you need to do is just spread this out across your tray and get it as even as you can. And as always, if there is any clumps in there, make sure you break those apart. Also, if you're using a soil that has big sticks in it, try to pull out some of those if you can. Now we need to measure our seed or get our seed ready and however you need to. And for that, we got our red rock mammoth cabbage. I actually forgot the name of that and I said it backwards. <laughs> I like to use a scale. You do not have to use a scale. I just like that it gives me a little bit of an idea of exactly how much I'm doing. And for this, we're gonna use a tablespoon, which you're gonna take it, fill it up, take your finger, kind of knock some of that out of there. So it's just below that line and it's almost 10 grams, which is good. We want in that about that 10 gram range is perfect for this type of tray. If you go any higher than that, it's way too much seed. So I'm going to pour some in my hand here and we're just going to try to get these seeds nice and even all across that grow medium. Make sure you're always moving. You don't want to focus one area because then you're going to have a super clump. If you're using a 1020 tray, I would suggest doubling the amount of seed that we're using today. So instead of doing 10 grams, you're going to do 20 grams and that should be perfect. Um, and then also the reason why you want to avoid big clumps is because as these begin to germinate and grow, they're going to kind of expand more and that will begin to restrict that airflow. And you do not want that because that will cause issues down the line. Now that I have this all seeded onto my tray, it's time to water our seed. For today, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to be watering this with a hydrogen peroxide water mixture. The reason why we actually started using this in our grow space is because ever since we moved from being in our nice little grow trailer and into our house, our grow environment has changed so much that we now encounter mold and issues with dampening off more often. So by doing this, we're actually being more proactive and hopefully preventing that in our grows. And that way we can have solid trays rather than having to throw them out. Now let's go ahead and get these seeds nice and moist. I'm gonna start a little far first. Now that our seeds are all moist, what we need to do is take our next green tray and we're going to place it on top like this. Now, if you don't have a third tray, remember you can just take this bottom one out from underneath this and just use that as your top tray. So we do that, I'm going to lightly kind of push that down just slightly. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little brick here and this is about seven pounds. The reason we put weight on top is because it helps push those seeds into the grow medium and keep them moist. So that way we get really great germination across this whole tray. Now, if you're curious more about why we do this, you can actually check out our video up here and that will show you exactly what happens whenever you add no weight versus weight because it is dramatic. The next step to do is we just need to take this tray, place it onto a dark shelf where it can begin to germinate. 
From this point forward, I'm actually gonna come out twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. I'm gonna miss this tray, and we're gonna do that for about the first three days or so until these guys are ready to come out from underneath the weight and go into the next stage, which is blackout. I'll see you guys then. Today is day five of our grow and these have now been underweight for four full days. And we're gonna pull this brick off and take a look at what we have going on. So first off, I am noticing that these guys are so ready to go into blackout. We removed all the seed holes and everything is looking really germinated and pretty at this moment. So this is great to see. Now, since we're going into blackout, I'm first going to wipe this debris off of here into my compost bucket. So let me do that real quick. Now that we have that all clean, we can talk a little bit more about blackout. So what blackout is, is we're gonna take that top tray that was like this, we're gonna reverse it into a dome. Now, something about these particular trays is they are kind of see-through. So you can see my hand directly through this, which means they will have light pass through and we don't want that. The reason why you don't want light passing through is because you're actually limiting your plants from getting light whenever they go into blackout. So that way the stems stretch up trying to find light and that way at the end of this it makes it so much easier to harvest these guys now like i said before you don't really want that light coming through but in this case it is okay because all you have to do is whenever you place this on top you're going to put this on a dark shelf as long as they're in a dark shelf you're good before i do that i need to water this <laughs> so let me go ahead and miss this real quick So now that we have our crop nice and watered, that way they don't dry out during this time, just take your top tray, make that blackout dome, and place it onto your dark shelf where these guys can begin searching for that light. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see you guys tomorrow whenever we take these out of blackout and introduce them into light for the very first time. See you then. Today is day six of our grow, and these have been in blackout now for one day. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this lid and let's take a look. So these look like they have stretched just like we talked about yesterday where we put them in the blackout and they just started coming up and this is exactly the height that i want to see them at and overall i think that this tray is looking gorgeous so since these are coming out of blackout that means it is time to introduce these into light for the very first time so let me go ahead and take this over to our shelf over here and we're going to place these underneath three of our barina t5 lights we really like these lights because one, they are inexpensive to run and also the upfront cost of buying them really isn't too bad compared to other grow lights and they just do a great job in our grow space. So now that we have introduced these into the light, it is time to bottom water these for the very first time as well. And taking a look at my grow medium, it is still rather moist. There's quite a bit of moisture here, so I don't need to give them too much water. So let me go ahead and grab a little bit of that bottom water. So I have two cups in my bottom water, and this is quite a bit for starting off. Generally, we actually like to use a lot less than this, but because these are sprouting trays, there is a sizable gap here at the bottom. And I know with this particular sprouting tray, I actually have to use a little bit more than I would with my other sprouting tray. So you gotta pay attention to that. So we go ahead and pour this in here. And let's check and make sure that's touching. And we are touching, so that's perfect. Now that these have been bottom watered, all I'm going to do is here in a couple of days, we're going to take another look at these and give a little update and I'll see you guys then. Today is day 10 of our grow and these have now been underneath our Barina T5 20 watt lights for four full days. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull this off the shelf, put this on the table in front of me and we'll take a closer look. All right, before we take a closer look at this, if you wouldn't mind smashing that thumbs up button because it really does help our channel out tremendously. And also if you would like to subscribe or hit that notification bell so that way you get notified anytime we release new videos like this one. Taking a look at these just from far away, I am so happy with the look of them right now. I love that we got really even germination. The height on these is really nice and our cotyledon colors are beautiful. They have a nice green tone to them and something that I really enjoy about this particular crop is it has these purple stems just like purple kurabi except for it goes up into a nice darker tone and then into our cotyledons where you get this beautiful veining from the purple and a nice purple rim. Another thing that I'm noticing as well is if you actually look at these really closely you'll notice between the two cotyledons that there's a true leaf starting to form. Now, whenever you start to see a true leaf, I don't know if you can see it on that one. There's a couple here and there. Some of them don't have it, but whenever you see a true leaf starting to happen, that is a sign that your crop is ready for harvest. 
especially with crops like brassicas, if you wait too long to harvest them, you're gonna end up with a bitter product and it's not as enjoyable as if you were to harvest them earlier. So if you're not sure when to harvest, a good thing to do is actually take one of your little microgreens, pluck them out, make sure you get rid of those roots, and just simply taste test them. This will give you an idea of where your flavor is at currently and if it's too bitter or if it's just at the right flavor palette that you want it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my station set up for harvesting and I'll see you guys here in just a second. <laughs> boop and a boop. So now I have my harvesting station all set up and all you really need is a knife or maybe scissors if that's what you prefer to use. I like using this knife because it is so sharp that it makes my harvesting experience super easy and quick. Another thing that I like to do as well is we love to take data. So we like to use the scale in our grow space. You don't have to use the scale. It's totally optional to you, but we like using one. Usually I harvest into a bag, but today I'm not going to do that because I thought it would be really beautiful to actually harvest these into a nice bowl over here. And that way you can really see the coloration on these. Whenever you harvest these, you don't have to hold on to them super hard. You can be very gentle, but make sure your hands are clear of your blade. Ooh, I like that noise. It's always a pleasant noise hearing them get harvested. Okay, so we got our first little corner. And I mean, look at those colors. Those are so pretty. I'm loving the height that we're at. This is such a great height for these. So I'm gonna start putting them into our bowl over here. And I'm just gonna kind of continue this process in harvesting. And another thing that I'm doing as well as I harvest is I'm trying to be really sure not to get too close to that grow medium. I try to keep a good distance between my stem and the grow medium when harvesting, and that way you don't get all that knocked into your produce. Going back to the whole knife thing, it really does make a difference in your harvesting experience whenever you do have a very sharp knife. As you can see, I am just gliding right through my produce super easily, and it's not snagging at all, and that's because we like to sharpen our knife at least every two weeks or as needed, depending on the produce that you're working with. I know if you're harvesting things like peas, you tend to dull your knife a little bit quicker. Make sure if you pull out any roots or like dirt or anything like that, just pluck it off of there and put it back into your tray. Okay. Now that we have finished harvesting, we got 84 grams off this tray. That is a good harvest. Now that we have harvested our tray, taking another look at this appearance, we can really just kind of gander at this beautiful coloration that I was talking about. Even on the back side of these, it goes from that purple, and then you see that veining that's not only on the front, but it's also on the back. I think that's something that makes this such a unique crop is it just gives this beautiful coloration that I know I've seen other purples, but this one, something about it is just really unique and I love it. Now, with that being said, what we need to do is do a little bit of a taste test because I'm curious what these taste like and I want to see how I want to use these in a recipe here in a moment. Mmm. Mmm. That is what's up. That tastes so good. It has a nice kick of that brassica flavor. We harvested these at the perfect time. There's no bitterness. I am very happy with this. So happy, in fact, that I'm excited to meet you guys here in the kitchen in just a moment to show you how to use these. I'll see you there. All right, y'all, so we have harvested our microgreens, and now we are in our kitchen, and we have all of our ingredients here in front of us to make a sausage dog. I don't know the actual term for that, so that's what I'm gonna call it, because we're using sausages instead of hot dogs. So first, let's go over what all we need. Starting with our microgreens. We have our beautiful microgreens over here that we just harvested. They are looking gorgeous in here. And then next, we have some sauerkraut, which is totally optional. If you don't like sauerkraut, you don't have to use it. I just love it. Then we got some um, onion. <laughs> I forgot what that was for a second. We have some diced up onion, some diced up orange bell pepper. Next, we have our brioche buns. These are such great buns, and we're gonna butter them up with some cashew butter because that adds a little bit of extra flavor. And I know it's not that healthy, but eh, it makes it taste good. Then next, we have our uh, sausage, and these are actually chicken Cajun sausages. Uh, you can use whatever type of sausage you want. I just really like something spicy. So this is going to be the perfect one for us today. The first thing that we're going to have to do is we need to butter our bread. This is my favorite part because I just think that buttered bread tastes 
extremely good. It makes the whole flavor come together. And I have this nice little silicone brush here and I have my butter that's already been melted. I'm just gonna kinda get this guy nice and buttered. Ooh, that looks good. So the amount of butter that you wanna use, totally optional. Um, I just can't even say it enough how much I love butter. So we're doing a tablespoon here that I melted. And I'm just gonna try to brush this the best I can over the tops of these. We're just gonna try to cover them so that way they're nice and shiny. Now that we have buttered our bread, this is like the easy part. I'm just going to literally take this out to my grill outside where Grill Master CJ is going to grill these for us. So we're gonna do both the sausages and the buns. And now it's time to dress this baby up before we eat it. So what I need to do first is I need to take my buns, kind of open them up a little bit. It's a little bit harder to do on this little plate. <laughs> and then now I'm gonna take mustard. You don't have to do mustard if you don't want to, but we both like mustard in our household. And I always like to put my sauces first. So that way, whenever I go to eat this, it's not super messy. Let's do our second one. Boom. Okay, so now that we have that in there, let's take our sausages and just place them into our desired buns. Now that we have our sausages and our buns, it's time to start adding our veggies. I'm gonna start with a little bit of my bell pepper. Eh. And we're just gonna put that to one side over here, best we can. It's kind of fine because it gets a little bit messy. So these buns are a little bit difficult to work with, as you can see. They don't quite want to open all the way, but I know they're gonna be super tasty, which is great. All right, now it's time to do our onions. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of this. We're just gonna sprinkle some of that on that side there. And now let's get some of our sauerkraut. I'm gonna load this up, because sauerkraut is amazing. And now the moment we've been waiting for, let's get our beautiful microgreens which I think I want to keep them kind of all centered with each other. So like that. And now I'm just going to take them, place them right on top. And now we have our beautiful hot dog. I'm so hungry right now, guys. Oh, okay. You ready? Let's give this bad boy a taste. Well, you guys, we have successfully made this sausage dog and it looks just as beautiful as it tastes. I'm really happy with how this turned out. And this is such an easy way to use any type of microgreen that you choose to use. We just chose this one because this is what we have today and we wanted some sausage dogs. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, or maybe even some other recipes, put them in the section below and we'd love to check that out. We also have a website and that is www.onthegrow.net. And we have a Facebook and Instagram that are both at On The Grow Farms. So have a great day, keep on believing, and enjoy your microgreens.